Hello! These tutorials provide an introduction to the Struel programs. This includes the software Comrel for component reliability analysis, Sysrel for system reliability analysis and Stadrel for statistical analysis. My name is Wolfgang Betz. In this very first tutorial I present the fundamental theory of reliability analysis. In engineering we approximate the system of interest by a model. Any model is a simplified representation of reality. The behavior of a model depends on its input parameters. For a finite element model of a structure, this can be the material parameters like the Young's modulus or the applied loading. The state of the input parameters is usually not known with certainty. For example, the snow that lies on a roof the wind load that acts on a structure or the future Young's modulus of a concrete slab to be designed are uncertain. In reliability analysis, all parameters whose uncertainty influences the behavior of the system are modeled as random variables. This means that the input of our model is not a single set of parameters anymore. It is a collection of possible parameter values each associated with a likelihood of occurrence. We refer to such a model as a stochastic model. A random variable is typically associated with a probability distribution. In reliability analysis, we are primarily interested in continuous random variables. A probability distribution is characterized by its probability density function, PDF, or cumulative distribution function, CDF. The PDF integrates to 1 and is the derivative of the CDF. The CDF represents the probability that a realization of a random variable is smaller or equal than a particular value. Different types of probability distributions exist. For example, the normal and the log normal distribution. For a specified type of a probability distribution, the random variable is typically characterized by either its moments or by its parameters. The first moment of a random variable is the mean. It is a measure for the average behavior of a random variable. The square root of the second centralized moment of a random variable is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a measure for the variability of a random variable. A normalized measure for the variability of a random variable is the coefficient of variation. It is defined as the standard deviation divided by the mean. A random variable can also be characterized by its parameters. For example, the log normal distribution is often characterized by the mean and standard deviation of the underlying normal distribution. Random variables can also be dependent. Dependency means that if the value of one random variable is known, the distribution of the dependent random variable changes. Correlation expresses a particular form of dependence, usually a linear form of dependence that is defined in terms of a correlation coefficient. For some outcomes of the random variables, the behavior of the system is undesirable. For example, parts of the structure will collapse, the state of the system can lead to fatalities or the serviceability of the system is no longer maintained. Such undesirable events are referred to as failure in reliability analysis. In this example figure we have two random variables x1 and x2. The mean of x1 is around 5 and the mean of x2 is approximately 10. Failure occurs if x2 is smaller than x1. Reliability analysis aims at evaluating the probability that a failure event occurs. The smaller the probability of failure, the larger is the reliability of the system. A measure for the degree of safety of the system is given by the reliability index, typically denoted as beta. The reliability index is a decreasing function of the probability of failure. The illustrated plot shows 
how the reliability index is related to the probability of failure. For some systems, the failure event can be expressed in terms of demand and capacity of the system. Demand and capacity can, for example, be stated in terms of threshold displacements, allowable stresses or in terms of stability criteria. In this case, the probability of failure is defined as the probability that the demand will exceed the capacity of the system. In a general setting, the reliability problem is expressed as this multidimensional integral. The vector x contains the uncertain parameters of the model. x can include, for example, the Young's modulus, the post source ratio, or allowable stresses of the materials of the model. But x can also contain parameters that describe the uncertainty in the loading of the structure. f of x is the joint probability density function of the uncertain parameter vector x. And g of x is the so-called limit state function. By definition, the limit state function is negative if the design criteria is not met and positive otherwise. This integral evaluates the probability that the limit state function is smaller or equal than zero, meaning the probability that the design criteria is not met. Usually, this integral cannot be solved analytically because the shape of the failure domain is not given explicitly. Let's consider this simple example of a bar. This problem has only one basic random variable, the load that is applied onto the bar. It follows a normal distribution that has mean 10 kN and standard deviation 2 kN. The capacity of the bar is assumed fixed. It is 14 kN. Note, often the loading is the dominating source of uncertainty in our models. The uncertainties in the material parameters are often considerably smaller than the uncertainties in the loading. We are interested in the reliability of this bar. To assess the reliability, we compute the probability of failure of the bar. The bar fails if the force exceeds the capacity of the bar. For this example problem, the probability of failure can be easily computed because the only random variable of this problem has a normal distribution. The probability of failure can be evaluated by means of the cumulative distribution function, the CDF of the standard normal distribution. It is CDF of the mean of the force minus the capacity divided by the standard deviation of the force. This gives 2.3%. A probability of failure of 2.3% is definitely too large to be accepted in practice. This means that we would need to increase the capacity of the bar. Ok, now we evaluated the probability of failure of the given bar, but we have not made use of the limit state function. Instead, we solve the problem analytically. Why? Because this problem is so trivial that application of the standard reliability integral would be simply an overkill. Anyway, we can solve this problem by means of a limit state function. The limit state function of the problem at hand is defined as capacity minus force, where the force is denoted by x. The probability of failure can then be expressed as the integral over the region of x where the limit state function is smaller or equal than zero. However, in practice we usually don't know explicitly where the limit state function is smaller or equal than zero. Therefore, we introduce the so-called indicator function. The indicator function is by definition 1 if the limit state function is smaller or equal than 0 and 0 otherwise. By means of this indicator function, we can rewrite this integral as an integral over the entire domain of x of the indicator function multiplied with the probability density function 
of a normal distribution that has mean 10 and standard deviation 2. Here phi denotes the PDF of a standard normal distribution. If we evaluate this integral numerically, we again end up with a probability of failure of 2.3%. Let's modify the example slightly to make it a bit more complicated, meaning we introduce a second basic random variable. Instead of working with a fixed um, capacity, we assume that the 14 kN is actually the characteristic value of the capacity, defined as the 5% quantile. Additionally, we assume that the capacity has a log normal distribution and a coefficient of variation of 10%. This requires the mean of the log normal distribution to be 16.6 .6 kN and the standard deviation to be approximately 1.7 kN. Before we evaluate the probability of failure of the modified example, we have a look at how the traditional design with partial safety factor works. This example problem has two basic random variables, the force and the capacity. The force has a normal distribution with mean 10 and standard deviation 2 kN. The capacity follows a log normal distribution that has mean 16.6 .6 and standard deviation 1.7 kN. To evaluate the design criteria, we are interested in the characteristic value of the capacity and of the loading. For this example problem, the characteristic value of the loading is defined as the 98% quantile of this distribution, which is 14.1 kN, and the characteristic value of the capacity is defined as the 5% quantile of this distribution which is 14 kN. The partial safety factor for the loading is 1.5 and the partial safety factor for the capacity is 1.1. Now we can evaluate if the design criteria is met. We have the characteristic value of the capacity divided by the partial safety factor of the capacity has to be larger than the characteristic value of the force multiplied with the partial safety factor of the force. And we clearly see that this criteria is not met. The capacity of the beam is much, much smaller than the demand of 21.6 kN. Therefore, we have to modify the capacity, we have to strengthen this bar such that the design, the, the design capacity is larger than 21.6 kN. Let's continue the actual reliability analysis. We want to evaluate the probability of failure of this modified example that has two basic random variables, the force and the capacity. The limit state function of this modified example is the capacity minus the force. Capacity is R, force is denoted as S. Again we introduce this indicator function which is 1 if the limit state function is smaller or equal than 0 and 0 if the limit state function is larger than 0. We have now this two-dimensional integral over the entire domain of the capacity and the force of the indicator function multiplied with the probability density function, the PDF of the resistance, the capacity multiplied with the PDF of the force. And if we evaluate this, we end up with a probability of failure of 4.9 times 10 in the power of minus 3, which is too large for our engineering problems. In the previous example, we have solved this integral by standard numerical integration. We could do this because our limit state function was rather simple and we had not more than two random variables in our problem. If a finite element model is behind the limit state function, 
or if the number of uncertain parameters is larger than 2, standard numerical integration is too computational demanding. Several reliability methods exist that can tackle this multidimensional integral. This includes Monte Carlo simulation, the first order reliability method form, the second order reliability method SORM, important sampling, line sampling, directional sampling, adaptive sampling and subset simulation. This is the end of part 1 of the Struhl online presentation. Struhl is developed by RCP and Eracons. Struhl has a history of more than 20 years. The software has already been applied and tested for a large variety of engineering problems. Please contact us for further information.